Very good. So, um, just one one thing that uh, that's uh, um, and it's a very it's a, another very pressing thing. It's something we talked about on this podcast before, but uh, it's a very very uh, rapidly advancing um, area. So, um, it's kind of an area where you guys have some expertise in. So, um, do you guys have any current recommendations or I guess um, suggestions on things to look into for um, privacy in the realm of uh, in the in the realm of cell phones um, in the modern day? Um, like projects, uh, there's uh, I know there's Pine Phone out there, and there's some other ones. There's some other operating systems you can put on Androids and such. Um, but is there anything that you guys are particularly interested in um, that's out there and available right now? Yeah, I actually recommend uh, to most people to get a phone with Graphene OS on it. And then just get an external um, LTE to Wi-Fi router or GSM or 5G to, to, to Wi-Fi router. So you basically have those two devices. You have your hardened graphene phone, but you don't have a SIM card in it. And you just connect to it via Wi-Fi to your portable um, router. And then, I mean, nobody uses the, the cell phone network for calls anyways. I mean, you're right. using Signal or Telegram or whatever uh, makes your, your uh, boat float. So um, and the reason is that it's much easier to replace those uh, little portable routers. And you can swap them out to uh, hide your, your network fingerprint. So it's not a big problem to have like three, four, five of them and then use them specific to what what your activity is right now. Um, and since you don't want anybody to know that those activities are connected, you're switching out the the router, the mobile router, and um, then you have your graphene phone, which is a little bit more hardened and has not Google on it. Uh, Google services aren't on it. And you can still have most of your communications um, um, apps and you can have your your navigation your web browser and stuff like that so i think that's that's actually very close to the ideal um, solution I'm, I'm not a huge fan of stuff like the pine phone or the libram because they're both their hardware and, and, and software stack are um far away from being everyday usable by normal people. Mm. So I, I think that graphene is, is really the way to go for, for right now. And for those of you that are more technically inclined, um, I always recommend putting Termox in there, which is a, a Linux shell. So you're able to run your command line programs and your SSH and whatever uh, from the command line on your, on your, um, on your phone so um that's that's basically all you need today uh, I, I think that the the pine phone librem and what else is out, out there they will need quite some time to to really be usable and secure enough because right now their their security is not up, uh, up to par um, mm -hmm. at all yet gotcha that's fair frank do you have uh, anything you'd like to, to offer any insight no, I agree with Smuggler. I think Graphene is probably the best you can do right now in terms of mobile operating systems. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, that, that and, seems... And uh, the separation, I mean, maybe... Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Maybe to add that uh, that the separation, like what Smuggler said, it, it allows you to swap it out more easily, but it also means that you have your baseband processor separated from the uh, operating system of your mobile phone. So that's also a security advantage there. Because the, the baseband processor that actually does the data traffic uh, has its own operating system, which is proprietary and has control over the entire system. And if you have that running on the phone, then um, you don't really have much device security there. So that's another advantage. Uh, so is that kind of like the management engine um, that's uh, removed from, I guess, the open source, more open source privacy friendly laptops then? Is that the, man the management engine of the, of the phones? Yeah, metaphorically speaking, metaphorically, yes, but it's yeah. it's more of like the yeah the operating system of the baseband processor, and that's mm -hmm. usually closed source, and uh, but it has all the capabilities. Yeah, in that sense, it's similar to the management engine, sure. and that's why you don't really want to use it on a phone. So ideally, I don't know, Smuggler, do you know if there is some uh, device that doesn't have that for Graphene OS, like a pure um, Wi-Fi based device? No, there isn't. And the problem is that they're 
on the same chip, so you can't really switch them off. But the graphene is actually doing a lot of work in, in isolating the management, uh, the basement processor from the application processor. So um, the, the main issue in, in that realm is really uh, tracking. And if, you, if you're really hardcore, you can actually do Ethernet, USB, uh, Ethernet over USB to your router so you don't even have a Wi Fi footprint. So that's for the pros. Uh -huh. mm. Uh, so smart people are working on it then. That's what I like to hear. Um, people smarter than myself, <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh Our strategy for liberty is the creation of a culture of liberty, a society that occupies its own protected space and implements independent systems of cooperation. We need to create a second realm. Device connection. Thank you.